That's it? <laughs> it's cool. Feels like winter. For at least a day. Okay, I want you to write for two little questions for me. We'll give you about two minutes, so you don't have to write very long. But I do want you to be able to share this with the person sitting next to you or behind you. I want to know when you have a question about something, how do you typically find the answer? More importantly, how do you know where to find it? And it can be a question for anything. I don't care what it is. Like, who's got the best burgers in town? What's going on this weekend? I don't care. But when you have a question, where do you typically go to find the answer for it? And when you've done research for a course project, where do you typically find the answers? Where do you typically do your research and how do you do that research? I'm going to ask you to be honest about it. So take a minute and write. And then I'll ask you to share with your neighbor. That was great. Yeah, like a full class mode. So that when you saddle up to the person next to you, you have something to talk about and you're not all embarrassed. Because you don't know what you want to say. Think about another minute. I'll just dub it. You just dub it? Okay. Bad kung fu movie. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> okay. in or do you just like give it keywords? I finally started asking the full question. You get much better results when you ask the full question. It's fascinating to me. I know nothing about how Google works. I know it's math and numbers and something else. Okay. What about when you do research for a course project? Google. So you still start with Google? All right. Anybody find somebody else who did something besides Google? In the back? Oh, library databases, yes. How many of you go to the UTPA databases or even know they exist? Okay. That's How many all, of you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say library databases? Okay. <laughs> this is good information we need to know. All 
right. When you Google for your class, how many of you use the take advantage of Control C and Control V when you're reading online? Oh, come on, don't pretend. There we go. Control C is the hotkey for copy and paste. In case you're wondering, Control C, what's that? Yeah. How many of you have copied and pasted when like, you're don't... doing your research? I'm, they can't. It's looking at me, not at y'all. I don't care. Right, there's no I record of how many hands go up. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things we want to talk about today is we're doing what we occasionally will do what we call like a research spotlight. And today we're trying to give you an alternative to copy and paste, even to just Googling. Because one of the things we want you to leave this class knowing is that research includes a choice, right? Secondary sources, talking about what other people have already said about this question you have, is just one option available to you, right? It depends on your class, it depends on your discipline, it depends on your professor. But we want you to remember that there are other ways to get research. The very first day you saw me, I told you I wanted you to be student scholars. Being scholars means seeing yourself as a researcher, doing some primary research, right? You being the person who goes out and collects the data, analyzes the data, draws the conclusions, and then writes about it, right? These are those words that we're going to use that we care that you learn, right? We're all going to have researchers' vocabulary. So when we're talking about primary research today, that's what we're talking about. When you're the person asking the questions and finding the answers for the first time, right? Maybe what you do connects with something somebody else has done. Maybe not. It doesn't always work that way. So what kind of primary research is there? I gave you four options today, but if you can think of something else, please let me know. There's always the analysis of original documents. This is something I do in my own work. Any 4-Hers in here? Not a single 4-Her in here? How many of you have ever heard of 4-H? Oh, yeah, in the very back, I saw your hand behind the dude in red. What's 4-H? The Lord the Yes, but they don't do agriculture exclusively. What else do they do? Yeah, they show their animals, they grow things. It's the largest non-academic youth organization in the country, bigger than Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts combined. Huh? I do analysis of original documents, which means I look at work called 4-H record books. They're these records that students keep as they're raising, well, for example, I was in foods and nutrition. And so as I was learning to bake and to cook, I had to keep, keep records. I had to set my own goals and write narratives about what I learned and when I blew up the pressure cooker in my mom's house and had to scrape tomatoes off the ceiling. All of those things are documented. So I analyze those and tell other people what I think they mean, why I think they're important. You could do that. Anybody think of weird documents that you have around your house that you think are unique to your family? Anybody have a mom or a grandma? Oh, in the back. Um, we have a history of our last name. A history of your last name. You absolutely, that would count, right? An analysis of original documents, like what you've learned and what people have said about where your name comes from and what it means. Any other examples? Nobody's family keeps papers of any kind at home. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. Okay. What do you? What do they keep? I don't know, but I know they have like. <laughs> but you know they're in a safe somewhere, right? Yeah, okay. There's a drawer somewhere full of papers. Guess what? You can pull that paper out and begin primary research because you're figuring out what's in there. Usually, you want to go in with a question like, "What's so? What's so yeah. special about these papers?" Yeah. That might be where you begin, right? Okay. So those are original documents. They don't just mean like things that are done in school or things that are important. Sometimes they're mundane things. <laughs> people have made entire careers studying nothing but record uh, cookbooks where people have written in the margins or recipe cards. All of those things are documents. Surveys. Anybody ever taken a survey? Yeah. Yes. Right? Anybody ever thought about conducting a survey of their own? No? Well, maybe now you will. Surveys are great because they're a way to get an opinion of a lot of people really quickly, right? So we do them a lot in 1301 and 1302 because we want to know what are these particular students, what, are the, what is this population thinking about this issue, or how do they, what do they believe about this thing? You I think it would be a good idea for those that are business majors to maybe go around and do a survey of their own to see what's missing around. Absolutely, business majors. 
If you're thinking about PR or marketing, surveys will become your friend, right? Focus groups, they're not up there, but they're kind of in that survey, right, where you're trying to get intense information out of a small group of people. Observation and field work, this is my favorite. 